Well, thank you again for joining us on our Wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast. We're looking at the theme of friendship as found in the book of Proverbs. And uh, what we're doing today is looking at some of the qualities that are identified in the book of Proverbs of a good friend. So I know a lot of Christians want friends, and a lot of Christians pursue friends, and a lot of Christians don't have much in the way of friendship. And so while that's subjective and different people have different ideas about what that looks like and even what they want, when we, when we look at friendship, which is commended but not commanded in Scripture and in Proverbs, we find uh, some qualities that we should be looking for. So if you want a friend, if you seek a friend, what should, you, what should a friend be like? Let's take a look. Chapter 18, verse uh, 24 is loyalty. And we looked at that verse a bit yesterday, but it says, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And so the very first thing is loyalty. You cannot really have a true relationship of any depth without loyalty. Of course, in a marriage, that's number one. Hopefully your very best friend, if you're married, it's your, your very best friend of all is your spouse. That's the way I think it ought to be. And that the very heart of our relationship with our spouse should be loyalty. You can't have much of a marriage and have disloyalty within that bond. And so loyalty is so important. And a friend that sticks closer than a brother is a beautiful way to describe that. Here's the second quality, and that's the quality of love. Chapter 17, verse 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Well, also in a marriage, uh, love is key as well. And so we, we would recommend that, obviously, for our friendship with our spouse in marriage. But he's talking here broader than that. He's not talking about a marital relationship, per se. He's talking about friendship. And he says here in this verse, he says that a, a friend loves at all times. I, I think that's very uh, precious to recognize. Uh, it's easy to love people when things are going well and when we're, uh, we're just having a party atmosphere. But at all times, a friend loves when we're not very pleasant, when we're not at our best, uh, when we're going through difficult times, maybe when we even lash back at the person who's trying to be our friend, and yet they love us anyway. That's a kind of friend that we want to have. That, that's the kind of friend we want to be. And I think I want to emphasize that as we go through these things, not just what kind of friends are we looking for, but what kind of friend ought we to be. And we're ones who loves at all times. A, a brother is born for adversity. Um, to have a friendship with somebody who is there for us at our difficult times, you know, when things are, are really going hard and that person reaches back out to us and shows a, a special love when we're having the most difficult of times. That's a, that's a true friend. In chapter 27, we see some more qualities of a friend, and one of them is honesty. In verse 5 and 6, we need a friend who's honest with us. Better is open rebuke than love that is concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. Better is an open rebuke than the love that is concealed. You know, a real friend is one who can openly challenge us. Now that we don't often look for in a friendship. As a matter of fact, it takes a, a real friend to take the chance to uh, challenge us, to rebuke us, to, to uh, talk to us about when we think you have gone wrong. We often think that's an enemy. We think that is somebody who's against us and uh, contrary to us. But Proverbs describes such a person who is willing to take the chance to challenge and rebuke us as one that truly loves us and the wounds that they might cause momentarily are wounds of a friend. They're faithful wounds. They're not deceitful. They're not flattery. They're, they're challenges for our good. Uh, that's a kind of friend we need. That's a kind of friend we need to be. Someone who will be honest with us, not mean-spirited, of course, not lashing out, not, not uh, just being harsh, but someone who speaks the truth in love that, I believe, is a definition of the, and a quality of a truly, truly good friend that we ought to have. And then one more thing here in the same, same chapter, going down to verse 9. He says, And oil and perfume make the heart glad, so a man's counsel is sweet to the friend. 
uh, if we're if we're putting together once again, speaking the truth in love, here is a person who uh, who his speech to us, even his uh, rebuking of us is like oil and perfume to our hearts. Now, too much perfume can give us a headache, right? Uh, but uh, the right amount smells sweet, he says, and and it speaks to our hearts. So, so a man's counsel is sweet to his friend. So he's not talking about this person who every time they see us want to challenge us and, and rebuke us and all that. Who We're not going to have friendship with that kind of person very long. But when needed, when they come along and speak the truth, as we saw in the earlier verses, but they do so in a sweet manner, in a way of love, that kind of person is a true friend. I encourage you to look for friends who have these kinds of qualities. Uh, these are the ones that, that we want in our life. And once again, these are the kinds of uh, qualities we want to have in our own friendship for other people. Uh, sometimes that makes it hard to stick by somebody when they're not doing well, to speak into their life when, when they may reject that. Those are hard things. But a true friend will be that kind of person. I hope you and I examine these things carefully as we think about who we need as friends, but also as we think about what kind of friend we need to be. I trust this, these, these words today will... Uh, enable you to have a wonderful day in the Lord.